We're in the middle of the Australian summer here and it is hot, about 40 degrees right now to be precise. But of course, we need to get a video shot this week, so we thought it'd be fun. Fun's probably the wrong word to be honest. We thought it'd be interesting to dive into a topic that we've seen a lot in the elite running world and that's active cooling. Pretty good cold open for the video. Yeah. Active cooling is the use of external cooling methods during exercise, things like ice bandanas, cold towels, or ice on the body to help limit heat buildup. Today, we're gonna to put it to the test ourselves while exploring the mechanisms and the evidence to support it and sharing ways that you might incorporate active cooling into your races. Plus, as always here at Run Lab, we'll be able to see firsthand how effective it is for an elite runner like Vlad compared to a normal human like myself. So here's the plan. Vlad and I are gonna run four reps of a one mile trail. For the first two, we'll run without any active cooling and for the second two, we'll use ice bandanas, cold towels in recovery and any other method we can use to cool down. To judge the effectiveness of our cooling, we're gonna cap our effort at tempo intensity or roughly the effort you might try to sustain for a 30 to 50 kilometer trail race. That's around 10% below our individual lactate thresholds, which we measured on the track a few weeks ago. If either of us hits our heart rate cap during a rep, we'll slow down or walk until our heart rate drops back down under the cap before continuing. By controlling the effort this way, we can see whether cooling has a measurable effect on heart rate behavior, pace, and relative perceived effort throughout the reps. Pretty warm today, mate. Probably we're gonna to get to about 41 or 42 degrees where we're running. Mm, good. That's what I wanted. Let's get this warm up done. Yeah, let's go. 600 meters in. I'm already so warm, mate. In all seriousness though, even on a day like today, it does take about 10 to 20 minutes uh, for your things like oxygen uptake, muscle temperature, and everything to stabilize. So even today, you know, shout out to the uh, Scandinavian viewer who commented, you know, that these videos were helping them uh, get through the cold winter. This one goes out to you. Warm up done? Mate, I thought the warm up would be pretty easy. I hit the heart rate cap constantly. <laughs> you know, hiking up the hill at the end there, mate. Yeah, yeah. I'm, that's the heart rate cap warning. <laughs> I'm so I mean, still. I guess that's how much difference like, heat can make if you're not used to yeah. it. Yeah. So it's going to be really interesting to see how we go today. Rep one starts now. Let's go. <laughs> The only time we'll see this view today, hopefully. I'm uh, having to ease off a bit. 155. Glide off in the distance. As soon as I get out of the shade, heart rate just jumps back up. So when you run in the heat, performance is not so much limited by your legs or your lungs, but it's more limited by heat accumulation. As core and skin temperatures rise, your body has to send more blood to your skin to get rid of heat. That leaves less blood available for working muscles and heart rate has to rise just to maintain the same output. Active cooling helps by slowing that heat buildup. Cooling the skin, especially in areas like the neck or the head, can reduce thermal strain, slow heart rate drift, and in some cases help athletes maintain performance for longer in the heat. It doesn't make you fitter, but it can delay the point where overheating becomes a limiting factor. And there's plenty of science to support it too. For example, this recent meta-analysis looking at multiple external cooling strategies found significant improvements in endurance performance in the heat, including better time trial results and longer time to exhaustion compared to when athletes were using no cooling. And this isn't just relevant for days like today, with optimal running performance typically seen around five or 10 degrees Celsius, heat related performance losses can start well before conditions feel extreme. That means active cooling can still be useful in moderately warm conditions, especially during longer efforts like ultra marathons where heat builds up over time. Just got a 11 minute mile for all you American friends out there. How long have you been here for? Uh, maybe three and a half minutes. Okay. Yeah, I did about an eight minute. Eight minute mile? Yeah. yeah okay. So. Well, my heart rate has recovered all the way to 138. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is going to be a slow rep, man. It's going to be a slow rep. That's why these videos take so long. Here he goes. <laughs> See you, mate. Managed to make it all the way to the downhill section without having to stop and walk. But, oh, well, well, that is the heart rate warning, so I guess I do have to stop and walk now, but. 
I did make it a little bit further. 159, let's see if we can jog it to the gate. I can see Vlad is there waiting for me. I'm sure to give me some words of encouragement. Thought I'd better come and, better come and check on you. There was an ambulance here when I got back. Oh. And I was like, <laughs> that's not for Chris. <laughs> and we did about a 12 minute mile that time. So, you know, I think I'll judge active cooling as a success if my decay in time slows down. It doesn't even have to be faster. Nice. What are you doing? Look at this guy. Hi. That's cheating, I don't have those pockets. Wow. Well, I guess you need all the cooling you can get. <laughs> All right, let's go. Rep number three, guys. Looks like we're staying with him a little bit better. Still feels like an oven when the wind blows, though. All right, that's the first time I've got the high heart rate warning, and we're about, probably about a kilometer into the rep or more. So we're doing a lot better. Third rep going uphill, heart race 142 at the bottom. Keep it nice and controlled. Okay, it's just hit 156, but I got further than I've gone before, and it's already back down to 155. So I've only walked for five seconds. 154, 153, I can get back into running. This is good. 826. Here he comes. You definitely haven't waited as long this time, I don't think. Hey. Hey. That was a lot faster. Was it? 10.40, a 10.40 mile. You look better. Yeah, I got a secret weapon for this one. Oh, another. <laughs> I think we're looking at a six minute mile for this one. All right, that's good. And this hat and ice bandana. Very stylish. Until I look exceptionally fast. All right, still low, which is good. 149 at the bottom of the big hill. Last climb, last rep. That's nice. Flads jogged back down the trail to not any height. I can't. 162, so we're just waiting. Honestly, I think this is a little bit of drag. Not aerodynamic enough. So, yeah, well, that's okay. Be seen with those. Luckily, there's no one else out here, mate. Somebody got that on camera. Okay, carefully sit down. All right, mate, well, that was a bit of fun. Uh, diving into the data, uh, we couldn't have scripted a better, you know, better results for active cooling, if, even if we wanted to. Like, I probably would have expected um, just to feel better. And yeah, my results, um, I was very, really happy with, actually, really surprised. My heart rate was, um, you know, within two to three beats per minute um, on everyone. And my last rep, I made a conscious decision to go a little bit, just a little bit harder at the start because like I'd noticed that I was a fair bit under in the third rep and that allowed me to have like the fastest rep by 20 seconds. But my average heart rate was only like one higher than what it had been in the, you know, in the second rep where I had nothing. So apart from the fact that it felt good um, and actually it was nice having it on your skin, I was surprised that um, I was able to run quicker and more controlled. I mean, if you look at my results, I mean, I was pretty blown away by it. I mean, my average heart rate in the two cooled reps was actually lower, but my pace uh, was faster. And it was significant as well. Like mine was very close, although I could go a little bit faster and a little bit harder, but your heart rate was like significantly less and you were able to go significantly faster. It wasn't even just the pace that was improved, but it was also my heart rate response. You know, when, when I did get that warning and I stopped, almost immediately my heart rate would drop back down to a normal rhythm and I was able to then continue That's on. That's a really good point. That's probably the thing that I noticed the most. When I did spike, it was the furthest I'd run um, mm -hmm. compared to the first two efforts. But it literally was three seconds before like it came down enough for me to start running again. Whereas without the ice, it was at least 15, maybe 20 to 30 seconds. I mean, like looking at the results today, 
I would find it hard to go into another race, even in so, you sort of moderately warm conditions right. without a cooling strategy. Yeah. And I know that that's difficult. You know, this isn't the easiest thing to implement. You know, talking to everyday runners, how would you suggest people, you know, go about trying to implement some kind of cooling strategy? Well, today what we've done is we've got, you know, five or six bags of ice, we've got eskies, we've got water, we've got towels, we've got bandanas. That's a lot of stuff. But I think you can do like simpler, smaller things that you can take out of what we did today. Um, but especially in like ultras and longer races where you've got crew um, or you're going for a long time, there's definitely ways that you're going to be able to implement this with your crew and or if you're self-crewed just by having like a cold towel or ice bandana that you can put on for sections of the race. Mm. And when you are having time out in a checkpoint, just making sure that you're really cooling yourself down, um, it, it shows that it's going to help you. And I think it's probably going to help you the longer and further you go. Yeah, I mean, that heat accumulation makes a big difference, especially in ultras and things like that. Obviously, it's kind of annoying for your crew to have to organize ice and stuff, but it makes such a difference, as we saw today. Um, and I think with, you know, using these sort of like ice bandanas, I mean, these ones from East Peak, um, you don't need a lot of ice in there. No. So even if you are self-crewing, you know, a lot of the bigger aid stations are gonna have some kind of ice water or some kind of bucket or Absolutely. something like that. Yep. Um, so maybe you can, you know, even just grabbing a handful. I mean, this has still got a lot of ice in it. I haven't refilled it. We didn't refill it during the reps. You know, like it's, uh, it lasts a long time in here, even though it's such a hot day today. But even if you, can't have cooling during the race or something, or maybe you're doing a road marathon, maybe just trying to have, you know, a cold towel or an esky in your car that you can have after you've done your warm up uh, and just cool off a little bit before you get down to the start line, probably yep. gonna make a big difference as well. And I mean, you do see people in road marathons, especially where it's warm um, and ultras where it's warm, which are on road, you know, you can just grab ice and put it under your hat. All right, mate. Well, thanks as always. Really appreciate your advice. And this was a really fun one, a fun experiment to round out the year. This will be our last video for the year. So I just want to say a huge thank you to everyone who's, you know, jumped on and watched, you know, our content this year. The messages and support and the genuine feedback that you guys have given um, has definitely spurred us on to make sure that, you know, we make next year really good. And uh, we'll see you soon. Awesome, mate. Well, till then, till next year, enjoy your running.